Hi, I'm Ed Mendelowitz from the East Brunswick Public Library Foundation. And I just want to thank the sponsors, the East Brunswick Jewish Center, the Karma Foundation, the Jewish Federation in the heart of New Jersey, and the East Brunswick Public Library, as well as the foundation. Uh, I want to welcome everybody here, and we have a few words from uh, Mayor Brad Cohen. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, and thank you for having me here today. I wanted first to uh, echo the comments and thank the individuals who are responsible for putting this program today and sponsoring it, the East Brunswick Public Library, of which I, of which I am a trustee, the East Brunswick Jewish Center, the Jewish Federation, the Heart of New Jersey, and the Karma Foundation. I also want to make a special thank you to Michael Kessler for putting on this program, which has such an enormous value to those of us that live here. Uh, it talks about and, and, and celebrates Jewry in the diaspora before the Holocaust, a time when Jews felt that they belonged to a community, that a community welcomed them, they brought culture, art, science, they felt that they belonged, that they had professions, that the community in, 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 in embraced them. And yet, juxtapose that to what we just are living with right now, where we have, uh, where we feel so safe and secure like they did, and yet at the same time, six months ago, we had an attack on the Tree of Life synagogue in Pittsburgh, and then only yesterday, six months to the day, we had the same thing happen in Poway, California, where there's loss of life in a country that we also believed have, has embraced us and made us feel welcome and part of the American fabric. So I, I appreciate the fact that I'm an American, but I think that we need to take the lessons of history and recognize that if we don't learn from our past, then we are unfortunately apt to repeat it. I too have children who are descendants of Holocaust survivors. My father-in-law is almost 94. He's here today. He is a concentration camp survivor and a native of Hungary. So I'd like to have him stand up and be recognized. And I thank everybody for being here today and, and enjoying learning a little bit about our history. But I just caution that we should always keep in mind where we stand in history and make sure that we don't allow that to happen again. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Cohen. Now I want to introduce, have uh, Rabbi Reed say a few words. I'm Rabbi Esther Reed. I'm the Senior Associate Director at Rutgers University Hillel. This is the second series on European Jewry before the Holocaust. The first series of five annual programs dealt with the history and culture of Eastern European Jewry country by country. This series deals with Central Europe and the first program focuses on Hungary. These programs have been produced and organized by Dr. Michael Kessler, my stepfather, to memorialize his parents, Manya and Moshe Kessler, brutally executed by the Germans and Ukrainians during World War II. The event's mission has been to save whatever could be rescued from the ashes of the Shoah, the legacy of a people who had lived in these countries for many centuries. As Senior Associate Director of Rutgers Hillel, these presentations are particularly meaningful for me. It is crucial that when we look back at Jewish life in Europe from years ago, we focus not only on the war, but more so on the rich Jewish life from the period before, which is exactly what we are doing today. Thank you. Thank you, Rabbi Reed. Now, Rabbi Paivo from East Brunswick Jewish Center. 
We've been so fortunate over these last several years under Michael's guidance to learn about many of the countries of Europe where our people lived in the pre-war era. Previous years have focused on the Ukraine, on Poland, Russia, Belarus and the Baltic states, and last year, Bessarabia. This year, as Rabbi Reed indicated, we're starting a new series under Michael's guidance on the Jews of Hungary and Central Europe. We've just completed the festival of Passover. The main religious experience of Passover, of course, is the Seder in all of our homes and with friends and family, during which we recall our ancestors' miraculous deliverance from slavery in Mitzrayim. We recall those events not only to remember their primacy in the formation of the Jewish people, but also to acknowledge God's redemptive power both for them and for us in our own lives. Similarly, when we learn about and remember the pre-war Jewish communities, we reach back into the Jewish past to acknowledge the depth of achievement that they achieved in the arts, in business, in academia, in the sciences, in finance, and in governance. And we remember the vitality and the depth of those contributions. At the same time as honoring that past, we make a claim for continued Jewish contributions in those fields today and in the future. Because for Jews, remembering is not simply an exercise in nostalgia. Memory gives life to what once was, and in the case of the Shoah, what was lost forever. Recalling all that the Jews of Europe achieved is an act of resuscitation, even of resurrection of a culture. It also means that we unapologetically make the case for us as continued Jewish contributors to the arts, business, the sciences, academia, finance, and government. We remember to honor what has been lost, and we remember to inspire us to continued achievement now and in the future. It is my honor and my pleasure now to introduce this afternoon's program on the Jews of Hungary. And thank you again to Michael. I really can't say more than uh, looking forward to the program, and I just want to say a personal word I got to know uh, Michael Kessler in the last year very well, and he's really a remarkable person. And he, put, he was the driving force, but there's 10 people that are gonna be performing, and there's more people than that that have actually worked to organize it. So thank you all very much, and enjoy the program. I'm uh, Dr. Tamara Freeman, and I have the honor and pleasure of reading an introduction by Dr. Michael Kessler. Um, an introduction about all the beautiful music that you're going to hear and see through dances this afternoon. But as my childhood rabbi would say, before I give my talk, I have something to say. <laughs> and what I'd like to say is, on behalf of Michael Kessler and all the musicians, welcome to today's program on the history and culture of Central European Jewry with an emphasis on Hungary since 2014, audiences have been enlightened by annual programs of lecture, music, and dance that strive to save from the ashes of the Holocaust the rich, vibrant life of the victims before their bestial extermination. The series was initiated by Dr. Michael Kessler and the East Brunswick Public Library in 2014. This collaboration has grown from four members to over a dozen to include an ensemble of musicians, dancers, and the lectures of Dr. Glenn Diner. Dr. Kessler refers to this group as, all in capital letters, T-O-P-P-S, TOPS, Tales of the Past Promoters. Thanks to our ever-growing audiences, we have moved from the East Brunswick Public Library to this beautiful community arts center. Our program is presented in three parts, classical music, a lecture, and Hungarian-oriented musical selections. The subject of today's presentation focuses on Hungary, a country quite different from the Eastern European countries that we have covered in the first five annual events. 
this program about Hungary is full of Sturm und Drang, storm and stress, full of fight, border shifting, and people migration. The story of Hungarian Jewry fills pages of adventures and tragedy. It also depicts people that uniquely represent some of the most capable scientists, physicians, lawyers, industrialists in the upper levels of society. We begin with the well-known lullaby, Rosenkiss mit Mandlin, in which the composer Mark Warshawski offers a poignant poem as a metaphor of the destiny of a Jewish child. Please feel free to join in if the melody is familiar to you. The next piece, Eli Eli, is a simple touching prayer that the sand and the sea, the rush of the water, the thunder of the sky, and the prayer of man never cease. Hannah Senesch, the Hungarian Jewish poet and playwright, conceived this song after her pre-World War II Aliyah to Palestine. A few years later, the British Army parachuted 37 Jewish volunteers, including Hannah Senesch, into Yugoslavia for a rescue mission of Hungarian Jews facing deportation to Auschwitz. Sadly, Hannah Senesch was captured by the Germans and executed at Auschwitz. She is regarded as a national heroine in Israel where her poetry is widely known. We have indeed chosen to dedicate our program to Hannah Senesch's memory. Several hundred years ago, the rabbi of Kalev wrote Jo le Kakasmar, his most famous composition to express the deep yearning for the redemption of the Jewish people and their return to the land of Israel. Jol Akakasmar, the rooster crows, is a song whose melody was heard even in Auschwitz-Birkenau as the Hungarian prisoners arrived for their final journey. Rachel is an aria from Halevi's opera, The Jewess. The aria reflects the horrors of the Alto da Fa, burning at the stake to which Hungarian Jews had been subjected through the centuries. Dance from Mamarosh, a violent duet, constitutes one of the many dances of Bela Bartok and Zoltan Kodai, two close friends and two of the most outstanding Hungarian composers. The end of the first part features a piece by Mordechai Gebertig, known as the troubadour of Krakow, Mordechai Gebertig wrote Es Brent in 1936 to warn the Jews of the impending war. Alas, World War II began in 1939 and marked the beginning of the Shoah, the extinction of most Polish Jews, including Gebertig, who perished in Auschwitz in 1942. Let us now turn our thoughts to the beauty, beautiful and lyrical and vibrant culture of Central Europe before the Shoah. Thank you for your kind attention. Rosenkess mit Mandeln 
Sola kokosmar, moid meg virod mar, zöld der döben, sik mezöben, sétál egy madár. Zöld der döben, sik mezöben, Sétálád egy madár. Mi csoda madár, mi csoda madár. Sárga lába kék a szárnya engem odavár. Sárga lába, sikék a szárnya, engem oda vár. Vár, madár, vár, tég csak mindig vár. Ha az Isten neked rendelt, Tied leszek már, ha az Isten neked rendelt, tied leszek már. Mikor lesz az már, mikor lesz az már, iban neha még nos, Ért szíjon tőmalé, akkor lesz az már. Hiba ne, ha még dos, ért szíjon tőmalé, akkor lesz az már. Oh, 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 oh. 
Reisen brechen und zerblasen, starker noch die wilde Flammen, als arum scheune brennt. Und ihr steht und guckt, da soll sich mit verletzen. Und ihr steht und guckt, da soll sich 
unser Städtel brennt. Es brennt, Brüder, es brennt. Oi, unser Orm Städtel nebach brennt. So bin schon die Feierstungen, das ganze Städtel eingeschlungen und die Bäse wird in Hutten unser Städtel brennt. Ohne Städt und kocht, da soll sich mit verlechten. Und ihr steht und guckt, da soll sich unser Städtel brennt. Es brennt, Brüder, es brennt. Oh, es kann Khalila kommen, der Moment. Unser Stolz mit uns zusammen, so läuft er weg in Flammen. Bleiben soll wie noch das Schlacht, nur puste schwarze Wind. Ohne Städte kocht er so sich mit Verlechten. Ohne Städte guckt er so sich, unser Städtel brennt. Es brennt, Brüder, es brennt. Die Hilfe ist nur in Eichalen gewähnt. Oi, das Städtel ist euch teuer, nehmt die Kelim, lässt das Feier, lässt mit euer eigen Blut, beweist, als ihr das könnt. Steht nie, Brüder, und das soll sich mit verlechten. Steht mir, Brüder, lässt uns Feuer, unser Städtel brennt.